because I've had many camps, and maybe some other people we know have had this kind of experience. I don't know. I don't know how many people have worked with more DK, for example. <laughs> 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 yeah, okay. My first camp, Shuggy and I were playing together, and it was like this. It was disorganized, and it was, it was all kinds of things. It ended up really well in the end, luckily, because of all the volunteers who were involved. Um, but we learned a lot of things, and along the way, we got really frustrated thinking there are people all over the world reinventing the wheel every time they want to, to plan or execute a people event. Um, so we got together, started sharing our pain points, and most, well, pain points means we were bitching about it. And um, we thought, you know, <coughs> instead of this, we want Drupal Camp planning to be like this. <laughs> So we started putting together all the documents um, with a lot of help from, from everywhere. I started with a fantastic guy I worked with, a former of one who really likes spreadsheets. So he created this budget where you just punch some numbers in and get out what you need and you know where to start. Um, and we thought we might be able to do that with a site as well. So we started collecting documents and... <coughs> oh, one more. Yeah, okay. So this is where we're going. This is where we're going to end. So you will, you will look like this at the end of this session. But first, <laughs> but first there's a lot of work to do. <laughs> so when Amelia and I got together and, and wrote this session description um, a whole bunch of months ago, we thought it was going to be like that second picture to do this kid. You know, <laughs> the Node 1 team had done a ton of events and I've been to a lot and I'm how proud of it. And you know a lot of people. And anyway, it turns out that there's a ton of really, really good information um, all over the place in all kinds of forms. Um, and it's in no, there's no real cohesive picture anyway. And um, I then foolishly decided actually the best thing would be to collect even more in no, the I collected a lot more information. I've sponsored through my job in the last 12 months probably 100 people camps. So in the sponsorship, um, uh, materials, I would always ask people, hey, when you're done and the dust, the dust settles, can you just tell me how many people came? Hey, Simon. How many people came? Um, what worked really well that you would recommend to other categories? <coughs> and what did you try that was a total disaster that, that you would, would advise people to stay away from? That's two really, really powerful questions. Um, and Um, I've got, uh, actually I suppose I should uh, look up to the projector at some time, it's not so important. I've got <coughs> at least 50 Drupal camps with incredibly quirky and specific and incredibly general and helpful answers to those questions. So we thought we were going to be able to produce, you know, a set of documentation and, you know, some checklists and it was going to be done. And it turned out it hasn't been that simple. Um, We've spent the last couple of months collating a lot of things. We've got a, a, a master timeline that um, for sort of planning from a year out to a few weeks after the event that comes mostly from Eagle's experience, and it's it's pretty fantastic. We've got um, budget planning information that's based a lot on what Node 1 has done. We've got a, a sort of growing catalog of these best practices. <clears throat> We've got a whole bunch of stuff. And so what I what, what we've decided, and when I say we, um, it's the five of us at least at this point, we have something of a framework, something of an idea of, of what we should do, and we'd like to turn this into a proper community project now. Um, I don't think that we can manage it by ourselves, and I think that the best result will actually come from uh, from us working together in the Drupal way. So here's my, here's my premise, okay? As the Drupal community, we know very well how to deal with um, broad community working code, Write your obligated out there because someone a lot smarter than me, my case, always someone a lot smarter than me is going to come and say, oh my God, right? And then I can make this run twice as fast and I'm going to add these other five features that I need to get done. Get. So we have the building on the shoulders of the giants thing in Drupal and we know never to write the same thing twice and we know how to improve on everything that all of our peers have already done. So when it comes to events, what we're doing is mostly creating artisanal, hand-blown glass flowers a hundred times a year and wasting an incredible amount of effort and energy that we could, in the best triple way, be, be, be 
multiplying and sharing with each other. So our ambition has become to create, uh, the first step now is to create a set of documentation that some people in the next few months can run with, look at these timelines, make some plans, look at these tips, get a good idea, try out their Drupal camp, and give us feedback. If anybody who wants to try this out, anybody who wants to contribute, um, got a whole bunch of raw documentation that we haven't um, that we haven't even managed to get into the presentation area yet. Um, looking for that kind of help. So we want to create a, a set of documentation, a public documentation that people can test out and iterate on. Um, and at the same time, a few people in our team, Campbell's here today, and um, Sally got volunteered the other day, and a couple people who aren't at DrupalCon at all. We have some more technical members of the team, and um, so phase one is, is, is getting a useful set of documentation up and improving that, and a lot of that's there. The second thing is um, we need to help get COD 7 out the door and working, okay? Who, who doesn't know what COD is? Okay, thank you. So there's a distribution of Drupal <laughs> called Conference Organizing Distribution, and it's got a lot of tools built into it to um, accept sessions, build the schedule, um, accept, uh, um, um, you know, you know, to register, to participate, all that kind of stuff. Pretty built out, it works pretty well, it's got some good payment integration, it's a great tool. The set, the Drupal 7 version is almost ready. Um, and they just did a big sprint on it in Asheville, Drupal Camp Asheville last weekend. I'm going to be talking with Ezra Gill this game next week about how it's going. Anybody who wants to give some technical help to make the Drupal Camp experience better, that's a really great investment right now to get COD 7 out the door. And then the grand vision, we've been talking instead of documentation, we thought it was going to be documentation for a long time, um, but talking this through, we realized that um, we're all geeks, so we should actually, of course, make Drupal do this stuff for us. Um, so, so there are two classes of information in this documentation, and the first class is, um, you know, don't have a build your own taco bar as the lunch option because it takes Drupal. Well, that's great to have. I can't turn that into code, really. Um, don't have keynote sessions in the evening. I can't turn that into code. But then things like best practice. Six okay. months to a year out, you better have your menu booked, right? And you better have talked with catering, and you better have checked, you know, what is what is a good venue? Um, does it have power outlets? Can it have Wi-Fi? So um, we're envisioning um, designing a plugin set of uh, functionality, maybe it's a feature, maybe it's whatever, or adding some, some things to COD, to, COD um, to, to create a, a camp team work area so that the camp site itself is where the camp team <coughs> collaborates and the site itself um, can do things like count down to an event day and send notifications. Have you booked the venue? Is there a contract? Yes. Oh, well, there's a workflow that sends the venue coordinators, yes, back to the team lead and check that they can sign off it. And the site knows when everything's coming, build in automated email campaigns to your lists. Um, all the, every, every best practice that we've been able to recognize in all the materials that we can turn into an automated process so that there's, you know, running a Drupal camp becomes install a site and then, um, you know, Do it the site gives you checklists. The site starts helping you out. The site lets you collaborate behind the scenes. So that's sort of the grand vision. Um, one. So, so, I, <laughs> just to make it, I don't think it's quite clear yet. What we're ending with is you are sitting in your location. You need to run a Drupal event. You've never done it before. A lot of people have. What are the best practices and how do we do it? Nick? Right. And the site. Yeah. And there's a site and then a workflow and right. all of the stuff is right there so that you have everything in place to try to make your own event specialized for your own area. Right, so you have this flavor mm -hmm. of the conference organizing distribution that's the camp cog or something. And it contains all these tools and it contains a little documentation area. And it's all right there so you don't have to sort of use Google Docs and, and like a hundred other things. And a really incredibly important piece of this puzzle, um, of the overall making camp easier to do puzzle, fell into my lap a couple months ago. Um, Yanne came up to me at 
the Drupal Business Summit, was it Business Summit in Vienna? A European Drupal Business Days. European Drupal Business Days in Vienna a few months ago. I said, hey, um, I know you've been thinking about camps, and we just made this really great camp site, and we made the package, and we want to, you know, let everybody use it. So if you get a chance to look at DrupalCamp.fi or DrupalCamp.ed, they're both done in COD, D6 COD, and they have a really, really, really super good theme. So you can take that site now and um, drop your content into it, and it's got a very elegant theme. So if we, you know, those of us who are interested in having a kind of a global plan for Drupal Camps, right? Um, you can use that theme, put in pictures of your own city, put in your own content, and it's ready to go. Um, it's a huge leap for it, and it's a, a great favor. So thanks for that. Um, it turns out that it's a little better than that still because the um, package that they sent also includes branded um, roll-ups, sponsor banners, badges, and a bunch of the materials that you need to set up a camp, and they match that site theme. So someone who's got the least time, but who wants to do something for, the, for their community, um, you know, they've got all these things they just basically have to put their name on and everything else is decided. So I'm really grateful for that. Another thing that we've we've written out and designed in here is, um, you know, this is a great CI package, this is a great web package. Here are the next steps for that. So if somebody wants to, um, I think we should wait until Cloud 7 is ready, but take that theme, port it over, make it responsive, um, add maybe some swag designs, some letterhead, a poster design based on this theme. There's some work to do there. But um, right now, I'm really feeling like someone could pretty much take this website and this stuff that we've got at DrupalCampKit.org and start testing. And one there on the bed. And one there on the bed. Yes. And I'm probably going to have to put my money where my mouth is and <coughs> run something in the next few months just to make sure that I'm not a total idiot and, you know, <laughs> I just have tower. a Drupal camp plan. So never try it yourself. So we can use that. <laughs> Sorry? We happen to have a Drupal camp plan in Denmark, so we can use that. Mm -hmm. we've, okay. we've got one. We have a day and a venue. Uh, okay. All right. Then. I guess you're going to be the guinea pigs. Yeah. Drupal Camp Northwest in November in the UK. Guinea pig number two. Yeah. Uh, I think we were the guinea pigs. Uh, I was the lead organizer of Drupal Jam, uh, the Drupal Camp in Holland, and we used uh, Drupal uh, Cloud 7 version for oh, our, our website. It had a responsive theme. We didn't couldn't use all the uh, all the features. Mm -hmm. And there was a, uh, we had to manually hack a few things to make the sure. internationalization work and stuff like that. But uh, Drupal Jam dot now was there. Great. That'd be great. Thank you. Um, we have a we have a theme that is fairly you know to be fairly universal, and I'm sure that you know we can start putting this stuff together. So, no. welcome to the team. <laughs> <laughs> now, we have so we haven't we haven't you know given you anything that we promised really in the in the session description. So I I think there are two ways to there are two sets of discussions that could happen now, uh, but maybe three. Um, each of these people have different <coughs> experiences in this sphere, and we can talk a little bit about, oh, I think that the top three most important things about running a are this and the other thing. We could talk about pain points and, and concerns that people who want to run events have brought to this session, hoping to <coughs> be given the empirical formulas. And um, at least in the next hour, I'd really like to talk about um, everything I've forgotten and the stupid assumptions that I've made and how we actually take this as a community project forward. How do we turn Drupal's code practices into writing and looking marketing content and um, you know, creating all this? I know you're there for you. I am here for you. <laughs> None of the rest of you, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, Ouch. are you prepared to show a little bit of what we have so far? I, I, yes, sure. My, my computer is actually extremely weird. It's, it says it's got no battery it's inserted, so I'm a little concerned about that.
So let's start by looking at It's come. There are stars. Do you all see them? <laughs> At least I'm seeing stars. Just a tick. So here's a very attractive website. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had the tremendous privilege to be the um, honest, I think we it, it, technically it was the keynote, but yeah. it wasn't about the public. Um, the Drupal Camp Helsinki a couple months ago was a really spectacularly well organized camp. And <laughs> and this is the this is COD in uh, Drupal 6, and this is the theme that I've been talking about. And if you look at, to get an idea of how this goes, this is Drupal Camp Estonia, which I couldn't attend and I was very sad about. Wait a second. Ah. Mm -hmm. So, here's a really, really elegant site, and you can see that um, this, if they've got some nice tricks. Um, uh, there's a certain flag that just creates this, this uh, slideshow out of a view. Um, really nice colors that fit with you know, Drupal's um, <coughs> overall image. There's a COD has this sponsor stuff. And you see the background is a photo of, of the city. Um, and it does all the things well that COD does well. It's got um, you know, scheduling pages and everything. But you can see that um, with, a, with just the, the tiniest bit of graphic work, then you put a photo of your city in the back. Um, you change the wording, you change the Twitter feed uh, over here, and you know, you've got your own site. So thanks for that, that was really, I love it. Um, and these files, plus the entire CI package that it is right now, are available on uh, a download, and there's GitHub that the London Drupal Camp is hosting right now for the code base. So we can do any work on that starting there, maybe. Um, what's live now? Um, so here is that theme stuck on a plain vanilla Drupal 6 site that I'm logged into. Um, so here's DrupalCampKit.org, which I opened up a few days ago. Um, here's a rough description of what I've talked about, and a rough version of the, the roadmap that I discussed, and some nice to haves. Um, so the documentation itself, um, I'd like to highlight an uh, underscore that I have about as much information has gone into this, I probably have that much again in a sort of a raw form. So anyone who'd like to help out on the content side, let's um, set up a, a work area, Marta, you know, some collaborative, I don't know if that's going to be GDOS or something, where we can filter what, 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 what's still raw into, into this roughly. Um, so, Here's things that um, we've had the time to put together. Um, and this is, a, this is not even complete, but it's really, really terrific already what, what Eva was able to contribute. Um, six to 12 months before the event, you know, decide what kind of event you wanna have. Um, what who's your audience? Is it gonna be multilingual? Form a team, set the dates. Um, so here's where, here's where I think, you know, the fact that we're online with this documentation is, is really helpful. So, okay, um, we're still, a year out, how do I plan my budget? Well, there's a page for that. Um, this is roughly your formula. Would you like to talk about, would, does anyone want to hear how to, how to, how to plan a budget before I count kids? All right, all yours. <laughs> Just give me the pitch you gave me the other. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, um, well, if you're talking about, if you're talking about time to plan an event, you have to start somewhere. Is this going to be a corporate sponsored event or is it going to be a purely community event? You have to make that decision pretty early on because it, it, it will affect your whole event, right? So you need to have, ask yourself a few questions and, and 
I'll just sidetrack for a minute here because the end idea with this is that we'll have something created that you just plug in and sort of answer questions and it will take you to, okay, I need a corporate event. It's going to have sponsors. They're going to be big number sponsors. Uh, that will help me understand how big of a venue I should have. Um, yeah. So anyway, back to the back to the budget discussion. Um, if you're going to have a community event, you don't need and you don't have the money to hold it at a Sheraton and bring in the suits. You need, well, in Kroner, you need thirty thousand Kroner. You need low ticket prices. You need uh, access to the community around you. You're going to hold an event that will have content for people like people planning the planning the event, right? <coughs> so you need to think of a few things. What is it? How long is it going to take? And what is it going to be? And um, how much swag are you going to have? Uh, where do you want to hold it? <coughs> what kind of needs do you have in terms of the digital world, electronics, and you know, is it going to be super duper techno camp? And you need someone that can handle that. You can't hold it down in the local church. Um, so you, you go through this. Oh, yeah, there's a venue assessment tool. That's, that's, that's yeah, too. yeah. So you go into the venue assessment tool. For example, right now we're working on a corporate event in Stockholm. Um, which is a completely different thing from a community camp. So we need to start looking. We say, we want the suits. We want the guys with all the money, or the women with all the money. Um, how do we attract them? We need 50,000 kroner for uh, the Sheraton. So that means we need to have so much uh, attendance in order to, to get those sponsors to pay that money. If we're going to have that many attendees, uh, we need to serve some good food. We're going to go through this whole thing. We're going to come out with a number of how many people we need to have, how much we need to charge them, and how many sponsors we need to find in order to hold this event. Right? Um, and then you start, you just start thinking about it. Well, if we're going to do that, what is the content going to be? And can we get Teresa to know? And the answer to that is no. <laughs> <laughs> He'll tell you yes, but no. <laughs> no, Teresa is a pro. Um, I, I, I'm a doctor. I get several emails. Dries said he would come to our camp. <laughs> set, how do I set that up? And I've seen him field a couple of these Dries is one of the nicest people in the world and one of the busiest people in the world. And I've seen people pitch their events to him, and, and he always says, that sounds great. I would love to be there if I had the time. Um, but that's a really good example, because in the past, uh, Drupal event planning has been generated by those conversations. So I've been involved in planning camps in Copenhagen and in Gothenburg and in Stockholm now. Um, and every single event starts with, oh, I got drunk with Dries at DrupalCon, and he said he would come. <laughs> that's not what we're doing. I mean, that's not why we're Drupal planning Drupal. Right. It's going to happen locally and in the community. And, yep. Yeah, uh, I mean, at one of my events, uh, Dries had the keynote, so I have some tip here. <laughs> yeah, I did. So uh, you have to combine it, either, uh, Trees, it would be really good to visit your family again. <laughs> so... <laughs> his mother make it. I organized the event in Brussels on intention, so... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we don't that's. Need that either. That's not what we're, of course. That's not what we need. One of the one of the conversations that you and I had along the way was, <laughs> Dries and Angie are fantastic speakers and very interesting and really wonderful marketing material. They don't have time, and to be honest, um, there are so many interesting people in the world, and we need to we need to get out of we need to get Drupal out of its echo chamber. All right, we need to attract non Drupalists to these damn events and get them to become Drupalists, one. But two, um, we need to be listening to a lot more people than just ourselves. Okay, so getting an Akadom Shaikbeak, getting somebody from the Joomla project, getting somebody who's a great designer or a political activist or whatever to be at least one of your keynotes is, is I think, a really valuable strategy for the future because if they like us, they're going to tell their communities about us and, and we're going to go that way. Um, and, and we're going to get new influences and new ideas from, from people who are smart about things that we don't know. So, so to bring it back to the camp planning, that's, yes. what we're, what, that's what we're trying to focus on in order to, to build this 
maybe we'll stay away from the Miles Davis metaphors at the moment. But what we're trying to build is, is something that will help you so that you don't have barriers. If you say, I just moved to a new country, for example, I happen to know somebody who's been through this recently. I just moved to a new country, I want to meet the other people, I want to be involved in the community, I want to do something, what do I do? I can't pen camp myself. The idea is drupalcamp.org will have what you need. You get together six guys or women, you plug in your you're not allowed to say that anymore. Uh, you that's all just that that you just heard You you get your six duplists and you <laughs> plug in their roles. So there's going to be the budget dude, and there's going to be the community dude, and there's going to be the social media dude, and the venue dude, and the person venue dude, and you plug in their roles, and it and it poops out. Sorry. <laughs> that's, that's the technical term. <laughs> you plug in their roles, and it poops out what they need to do. Right. right. So that you don't end up, for example, I'll just pull it completely. Uh, yeah. Random example out and say three days before the camp, oh my god, we need programs. We didn't know anybody needed to proofread them. <laughs> and we just printed three thousand of them. Right. <laughs> my father and my father in law my father in law, if he were on one of the camp teams, he you know, and he would say, Well, it's not my fault, you didn't remind me to remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we want this thing that's gonna remind you to remember to print programs and have enough power strips and well, Jam, if I can jump in. I want to jump in. Well, there are a couple of parts of this. I, I love having the voice of God here. This, I don't know how it sounds out there. This is awesome from up here, though. <laughs> Luke. Um, well, there's a couple parts to this, and, and the first is is uh, distilling all of the experience from people who have hosted camps into a set of what we can call community best practices, and that there's a, a we have really good models for how to do that already with Drupal, and then the other is figuring out what are the tools that are complementary to those best practices, and how can we offer people uh, an integrated workspace that complements those that exact information. So the first part, I think, is just a lot of discussing to get things distilled the way we've gotten to start with now. And we're actually going to be having a BOF session quite shortly about this. Right what, after this session. Right after this session. I know, but I can't remember the name of the room. Yeah, basically if you want to talk about this and help us get this distilled down into what are the things that are important to include as tools or as practices, what are the questions that you have as somebody who wants to start a camp or an equal event, come and join us in the boff room and we'll hang out and have lunch. Or ask questions now in the last five minutes before we need to go so there's time to get to the boff room time. Oh, all right. Ooh. Let's call it ten minutes and then, but I would keep it ten minutes. Hey, that's a good question. question. One of the ideas that we've used for our session is to uh, use um, Git, so you put text documents up that people have access to. That's a great idea for you developers. Yeah. yeah, well, I, I had reservations about it because it includes a lot of people.
Actually, this is this is something that we should talk about at the BOF because there are a lot of options okay. here.
learn what a node is, what a view is, what a block is, all that stuff. It's three hours long. Your first day of your community day, so your Saturday morning, you put a block for Hello Drupal, and in your other track, you put the geekiest, most hardcore sessions that you've got. So the newbies go and learn, <coughs> right? And everybody else is happy, and then after lunch, everybody's enough on the same page so that everybody can benefit from the conversations, everybody knows the terminology. That's a fantastic pattern. Um, a couple others um, run a training day the day before your camp. Um, find um, training companies that can be Acquia, uh, build a module, Drupalize me in some form or other. Uh, people who do training, um, make them, make them, here's one thing that's worked pretty well. Offer to, to a training company to be camp sponsor by you know offering paid training at a steep discount and splitting the revenue 50-50 between the camp and the training company. And the training company gets great um, you know, mojo in the community. The, the, the camp is motivated to market it because the more people sit in the training, the more sponsorship money they get. That works really, really well. Um, so okay. Drupalize me what to the future. Okay, so that's meta, meta, meta training for Drupal right. stuff. Right, so we're developing the Drupal Do we have right now? Okay. Okay. Right. See, so let's build out, let's build out the training page here with that information. It's wide open, right? It's, it, you know, because, so that's another way to do it. Um, and, and the last cool model I just want to talk about Google Science Camp in Cambridge in January, and they tried out something that I had never seen before. It was really cool. The first day was a keynote, install session, sessions, you know, multiple tracks, a classical uh, Drupal Camp model that worked great. Um, it was a social event Saturday uh, night. Everybody <coughs> got to know each other technically and socially. It worked really, really well. The next day was a bar camp. The next day was meet at 9:30. What do you want to talk about? You know, sticking the check marks, building the whole thing. And it was a fantastic day, right? But all the people new to tech and new to open source who've never been to a bar camp before would have been freaked out if that had been the first day. So everybody had built up trust with each other to be able to learn that. I love that. It's the only time I've ever seen it, but I think it worked really, really well. Um, if you have a one-day event, you cannot have a social event in the evening because everybody drives home. I'm sorry. You can have a social event at a one day or do it the night before. Um, I don't know. So, Jim, can I cut you off as the voice of God and say, it's lunchtime? <laughs> I think in the end, this looks like there are three aspects that we want to be helping people with. There's informational, which is like a book or a huge documentation resource. There are uh, file resources like sample brochures, things that you can modify, a letterhead. And then there are just tools to help you with aspects like the timelining and budgeting. And more or less everything fits into those three, and that's what we really want your help with, is defining what goes inside those three. So, go get some food. Come to the boss. Thank you for coming.